Hey gang. You know, I love doing book reviews and I love hanging out with my puppies. And I've been trying to do a review of this book for a year and a half. Someone asked me to read it. A uh, subscriber asked me to read it. And I and I have been trying to read it, but I haven't had a chance. So I thought I would do something differently with this book review and that I would uh, go do it like chapter by favorite chapter rather than read the whole book and then, and then do the review because with everything I have on my plate right now, it might be another year and a half before I finish this whole book. But I did read the first chapter. And the book is Whipping Girl by Julia Serrano. And it's, this book is copyrighted in 2007. And then again in 2016. And Julia Serrano is, as I'm finding out, among other things, a biologist. A transsexual woman, oh, the, the book, Whipping Girl, the tra a transsexual woman on sexism and the scapegoating of femininity. And uh, uh, it's a classic. It's, you know, I'm not the first one to read it or review it, obviously. I'm sure a lot of you probably already have. But I like what I read so far. I, I like her interpretations and her ideas so far. Um, some of the cool things that she said in the first chapter really got me thinking when she says, you know, how, how are you treated? How is she treated as a transsexual? How people treated her, how a society treated her, and I mean, I, I've been saying this myself, but not in these words. And I, I didn't, you know, I'm not as articulate as this lady is. Um, <laughs> you know, the she one of the one of the things she says is the media hyper feminizes us by accompanying stories about trans women with pictures of us putting on makeup dresses and high-heeled shoes in an attempt to highlight the supposed frivolous nature of our femaleness. Now, this was written in 2007. Nothing's changed. They still do the same thing. It's, it's the fascination that society has with us and their ideas. And so when the media wants to cover us, they try to you know, get into those things that they know people are going to want to see. Not necessarily the reality of being a transsexual, but the the titillating stuff is what they want to throw out because it's ratings. It's all about ratings. You know, one of the worst things and the best things that can happen to, to a, a marginalized group like us is publicity. Okay. Yeah, we need the world to know about us. We need the world to try to understand us. We need to educate the world through publicity, through documentaries, through stories, through books, but mostly through the media of television because nobody, you know, people are more willing to watch TV than read a book. But at the same time, that, that medium will portray us in a light that will receive the most ratings, the biggest ratings. And that's not us. I mean, we can be boring too. <laughs> We're there's nothing. I, I'm just I'm just a regular person. Is all I. I'm just a regular person, you know. But it's the it's the society's fascination. Will you knock it off? Society's fascination with us. That if if someone was going to do a story about me on television, it would be. You know, they'd put all the titillating stuff in there. You know, they'd they'd, uh, they'd they'd get a shot of me putting on nail polish 
uh, or, or trying on heels or sliding hosiery up my leg, which, you know, uh, all, all three things that I don't really do very often. <laughs> and, but that, that would be, you know, transsexuals do that, right, Rachel? Yeah, yeah, they do. Well, then why don't you do it? And then, okay. Uh, but another thing that, you know, and I imagine the rest of the book is going to cover on this quite a bit, is that this topic of misogyny versus transphobia. And when she says, you know, when people treat us a certain way, it's not transphobia. They're not treating us with fear. They're treating us with anger and hatred, and, and they're looking down upon us. It's misogyny. It's trans misogyny. It's not transphobia. When, you know, one thing I, a very um, uh, succinct little observation she had is, you know, when, it, when women can wear men's clothes and nobody says anything, and a, but if a man wears a woman's clothes, he's a fetishistic cross-dresser. And, and basically, you know, that's not, and she's saying that's not transphobic, that's trans, transmisogynistic. It's, it's, we just don't like you men who want to be women because who on earth would ever want to leave the boys club? And, and I've been saying it for years and, and, and I haven't really clicked. It hasn't really clicked with other trans women that I know. And that's why I don't have a lot of friends in the transgender community. Uh, you know, personal friends, because they don't seem to get my message. And that is, I'm not a woman trapped in a man's body. I'm, I'm a man that wants to be a woman. And, and I will look any man in the eye and tell that man, I don't want to be in your club anymore. I don't like your club. I don't want to be in the boys club. And see, that, that's exactly what sh this Julia Serrano is alluding to. In, well, not alluding to it. She, she's saying it. You know, the fact, the thing that bothers the society and, and the patriarchal part of that society the most about trans women is we, they perceive us as a threat to their masculinity because we're men who choose to be women. What does that say, you know? Uh, uh, we had it all. We had our male privilege. We had, uh, we, we could have been tough. We could have been bigger, but we didn't want, we didn't want to. I don't want to be, I don't want to be the toughest person in the room. I don't want to be the biggest person in the room. I don't want to be the strongest person in the room. That's not, you know, I can, I can emotionally, I can be the strongest person in the room. Mentally, I can be the strongest person in the room, but I, I don't want to be that masculine. I don't want to portray that masculine image. I want to portray the feminine image. I want the world to see me as feminine. And then I don't have a problem, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna use that, what I, I have always called, me personally, this is not Julia Serrano, this is me personally saying, I've always called that I'm a woman trapped in a man's body as, a, as just a, a, a way to get out of uh, uh, the boys club. No, I, I was never a boy to begin with. I was always a woman trapped in a man's body. But see, I, I follow the bio. I believe in the biology, and I believe that I was a man. I believe that I was born male. I believe that I was, you know, uh, I was socialized male, and I grew up male, and I, I learned how to be a male, even though I didn't want to, because I didn't see an alternative. I did not think that something like what you see here today could ever be possible. Um, so I figured I better, you know, stick with, I gotta, gotta go, gotta work with what I got here. And, uh, um, you can be, or I can be, I can't speak for everyone. I couldn't, I can be, I, I was a man. I was a boy. I was a man. I played the role. It's just that, you know, oh, uh, I didn't die young, so the longer I, <laughs> the older I get, the harder it is. <laughs> the harder it is. You know, it's, I, anybody can play a role for a for a two hour movie. You know, uh, 
But when you uh, when you're gonna play a role for you know 50, 60, 70, 80 years, it gets a little bit it wears on you a little bit. So I um, don't want to play that role anymore. And this book is speaking to me, and and uh, you know I I haven't completely transitioned. I, I'm not completely out to the world, but I'm kind of looking forward to that day. I really am. I'm looking forward to that day when when everybody knows that I'm transsexual. That anyone I come in contact with sees me as transsexual. Maybe they maybe they won't. Maybe they'll just see me as female. It works for me. But I'm looking forward to that day because I want to know I want to know on a day, I want to feel on a day to day basis how I get treated. Right now I get treated great by everybody, but it, but it's a part time gig. Uh, I mean, for a lot of my friends and coworkers, they they know they know I'm trans, so it's that's it's not a part time gig with them. My wife treats me wonderfully, and that's not a part time gig. My kids love me, and that's not a part time gig. But for a lot of people that I come in contact with, they only know the male. They only know the male. And I and I want to know, and I want them, and I would truly want them to know the female, but I. But I just can't out of respect to my wife. And and I'm okay I'm okay with that. You know, we all have to make our sacrifices. And that's not a big sacrifice. But someday I'm confident that she'll be okay with it. And someday I'll just be able to be uh present to the world any way I want to, anytime I want to. You know, I'm I'm I can wait for that because I know it's gonna happen. I know it's going to happen, so I'm okay with it. If I felt like it was stif I was stifled, it was never going to happen, then I'd probably be making some major changes, but I, I uh, wish would be very painful and heartbreaking. But uh, I know it's going to happen, and, I, you know, and I'll just work towards preparing for that day. Uh, anyway, good book, and I can probably read a chapter every couple days and, uh, and come back on with a, a video a little more often than I have been, um, and uh, and talk about this book. And I think uh, you know, uh, well, we'll know in a few more chapters uh, what what my what my um, rating is going to be on it, probably. But I like it so far, and I know it's a well-respected work of art, uh, and a, you know, a good book. Anyway, that's all I got. This guy here, he's just so tired. Are, you're so tired. You're so tired. Come here. Say hi to everybody. Get up here. Get up here. Say hi to everybody. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi. They're right there. Look. Look. Say hi. Say hi. This is my guy right here, man. Can I have a kiss? You gonna give me a kiss? No. He's mad. He's mad. Look how tired he is. <laughs> it was raining all day. It was raining all day, and he's been in the house. He's only been outside to go potty, and he's been, he's been in the house just laying around. I've got to be so tired. I'm be so tired. He just wants to go to bed. No, just leave me alone. Leave me alone, Mama. Just leave me alone. Oh, go back to bed. Go back to bed. Love and peace to all. And let's just try to accept one another for who they are.